After two and a half years of wondering if the system was even real, the Atari VCS is now in my possession, and it's not a Raspberry Pi in a fancy case. If you're somehow out of the loop, the Atari VCS was first announced at E3 2017 as the Atari Box, then shifting to the Atari VCS as a nod to the original Atari video game computer system, first released in 1977. In keeping with the Atari legacy, this system has been plagued with issues from the start, initially by launching it on Indiegogo without a working prototype, then calling vocal YouTube critics fake news on social media, and then getting lambasted by professional critics and even refusing to pay their lead designer for his time. Gaming YouTubers who have dismissed it from the start either said it was a scam like the Coleco Chameleon, or at the very least an overpriced Price Ouya. Well, it's in my hands now, so who's laughing now, huh? Well, probably the critics of this system. The Atari VCS isn't going to win any of those people over, and I'm not about to try to convince them otherwise. Most of the critics didn't even bother to buy the system, which I guess makes sense because they all thought it would be a scam. But even then, now with the Atari VCS finally coming out, I doubt a lot of people who criticize it in the first place would even recognize that the system is real. Whenever I would admit that I bought the Atari VCS, I would always get the same comments. You're wasting your money. Why would you buy something when you know it will fail? Well, that's why I bought it. Seriously. And to explain, I, I really like quirky things. I'm a collector more than I'm a gamer, and most of my collection up until now has been more focused on curating an aesthetic of gaming culture rather than just gathering what's ever listed on the IGN's top 100 games this year. It's not really just the quality of the game or the system, but the context of its place in history. I have a Virtual Boy, a Vectrex, a Panasonic Q, and a Laserdisc collection. I bought the Atari VCS because it looks good and there's a very high chance that not a lot of people I know will have one. So how is it? Was it worth the wait? Did I waste my money? So let's start out with the packaging and it's pretty subtle, just showing the system on the front along with the specs, kind of like the PlayStation 5 box. Mine's the 800 collector's edition which means it's individually numbered and comes with 8 gigs of RAM. Originally, the Collector's Edition was the only system with 8 gigs, but backers of the Onyx version were upgraded from 4 to 8 gigs at no additional charge, and the system will have 8 gigs going forward. On the back, the box showcases what you can do with it, and the bottom shows the specs. Pulling off the slip cover reveals a box with asteroids on the top, the Atari VCS logo on the front, and the Fuji logo on the left. And when you pull up the flap, you're greeted with a quick start guide, and when you open that, you're greeted with the Atari VCS. And I have to say, the Atari VCS is a solid piece of hardware in a very compact form factor. The design is one of the main reasons why I purchased it, as it's a modern recreation of the original 2600 design right down to a real wood veneer on the front. And that's the reason why I went with the collector's edition instead of the Onyx and the additional RAM. In addition to the wooden veneer, the collector's edition comes with a certificate of authenticity, and mine is individually numbered 3,754 out of 6,000, which is kind of disappointing because my Indiegogo order said 2011, but whatever. Despite being made out of plastic, the Atari VCS looks like a premium product that would look fantastic on an entertainment center. It really goes for a mid-century modern design. The Fuji logo on the front glows white to indicate power, and it has two USB 3.1 ports in the front, not quite visible at first glance. The original design didn't include them, but I'm glad that they did. On the back you'll have standard ports, including two more USB 3.1 slots, HDMI, an Ethernet port, and an AC port that fits with the included power brick. And like I said before, there's not much included with this system besides a power brick and an HDMI cable, which are all sadly unmarked OEM parts. It would be nice to at least have the Fuji logo on it. So if the Atari VCS doesn't come with a controller, how do you control it? 
Well, Atari will gladly sell you a controller separately, and you can choose from the classic joystick or a modern controller similar to the Xbox. And you can also use your own controller or even a keyboard and mouse. I went with the classic controller since I have dozens of compatible controllers and the controller is made by Power A and it really hits all of the nostalgia notes while improving on the original design to make it more modern. First it's wireless which is nice but you can also plug in the included 10 foot USB cable to the system and play while it charges. In addition to the traditional fire button in the top left, this controller includes a home menu and back button and a shoulder button which frees up your thumb for other actions required for some of the games. There's also an orange light that will show you the direction you're pushing the joystick and it will vibrate, but one feature I really like that isn't completely obvious is that the joystick also doubles as a spinner, so playing Tempest has never felt so good. Well, at least on a computer, nothing beats the original arcade experience. So it's a solid looking piece of hardware. It doesn't look like a toy. What does the software look like? Uh, the software is pretty basic. A lot of people will harp on the fact that this thing is a relatively underpowered PC for its price point, and I'll get into that in a bit later in the video, but the OS is built pretty well, and it doesn't run sluggish, it's very snappy, and it should because it's a Linux distro and Linux runs on everything. When you first boot up the machine, you'll need to run a couple of updates, which includes a BIOS flash, which is pretty scary. But once you get all of that set up, you just need to establish an Atari VCS account. You can choose from a variety of avatars from classic Atari games, and I went with the Ninja from Ninja Golf, because why not? And with that, you're greeted with a pretty bare bones UI. The Atari VCS doesn't really include a lot right out of the box, but there is a marketplace to download items. The Atari VCS Vault is included, which contains 100 different games, but the catch is that 80 of them are Atari 2600 games and the rest are arcade classics. The 2600 games are really nothing to write home about, but they play great, and there's included scan lines and you can set the difficulty and other determining factors before you play. The arcade games are much more substantial since the arcade games of that era hold up significantly better than Atari 2600 games even if they're 40 years old at this point. Asteroids, Tempest, Centipede, all the classics are here. And if you want more games, well, you're in luck because the store has seven games for you to peruse. That's right, seven games at launch. Take that, Xbox Series X. The icons are designed to be like Atari carts, which I think is a nice touch. And the games range in price from two free titles, then from $3.99 to $24.99. And each game has a description along with screenshots and the amount of space that it takes up, which is important to know because the Atari VCS only comes with 32 gigs of SSD storage. There's also a service called AntStream, and this service acts a lot like Google Stadia, but it's for retro games. It's a monthly service that you can play anywhere, but there's a native app on the Atari VCS, and it comes with a 30-day free trial. I haven't played it yet, but I do plan to for a future video. So you see that there's not too many games on the system, but Atari promises there are much more on the way, and they kind of look fun. In addition to games, there are traditional apps that you'd find on consoles like YouTube, Disney+, Discord, Twitch, and HBO Max. Another cool feature of the Atari VCS is a companion app for your phone, aptly called the Atari VCS Companion. And from there you can use your phone as a controller, which comes in pretty handy if you need to search for stuff instead of using the on-screen keyboard with the joystick. The other feature that I really like is that Chrome is native on Atari VCS, which is pretty groundbreaking when you think about it. Most consoles use a fork of Opera, but this is a native Chrome browser on the Atari VCS, which means that you can use the Atari VCS as a Google PC accessing websites just like you normally do with Google Docs, Google Drive with no limitations. And that also means that the Atari VCS is capable of playing Cyberpunk 2077. Well, through Stadia, of course, but since the Atari VCS is compatible with most keyboards and mice, you can simply plug them in via USB and play Cyberpunk with no issues, considering that you have a strong internet connection, of course. 
And there's another feature known as PC mode, which allows you to run another OS on the Atari VCS if you choose to do so. I don't have a key for Windows to use, but there are a couple of Linux distros out there that turn this thing into a retro box, and I think I'll give that a try. So in case it wasn't obvious, the Atari VCS is a pre-built PC that promises to blend the best parts of PC and consoles. The Atari VCS contains an AMD Ryzen R1606 APU, which is AMD's brand name for a CPU and GPU all rolled into one. All-in-one chips aren't the most powerful when compared to a dedicated CPU and GPU, but integrated graphics have come a long way to produce acceptable graphics. I haven't gone too much into the hardware side on my Atari VCS, but Atari does show Fortnite running on it, so I guess that's a start. I haven't found any benchmarks of the Atari VCS itself since it's so new, but benchmarks of the APU exist and they're on the low end when compared to other retail offerings. Could you build an equivalent PC for less than the retail price of an Atari VCS? Maybe. The retail equivalent of this chip appears to be the AMD Athlon 240GE with a benchmark score of 100 more than the chip inside the Atari VCS. And the Athlon goes for $130, so if you get a motherboard, 8 gigs of RAM, a case, and a power supply, you can build your own Atari VCS for $258 but it's not gonna be the same form factor as the Atari VCS. If you wanted a pre-built machine with the same processor family as the Atari VCS, expect to spend around $235 with no OS, and that's for a previous generation of the chip. The new R1606G builds don't appear to be available just yet, and it's not like you can purchase the chip individually for personal use and build your own. The R1000 series is a cost-saving solution for enterprise builds. Small, inexpensive, but capable PCs make a lot of sense, and with the economy of scale, you can get the price point to where you're making a profit on every console you sell. And that's what's in the Atari VCS. Obviously not going to be a PS5 or Xbox Series X competitor, but I don't think anybody really thought that this would be. $299 for a pre-built PC with your Bring your own device mantra might be a really good model for people looking to get into Linux for the first time. So I sung all these praises of the Atari VCS, what's wrong with it? Well, from a hardware perspective, not a lot. The system boots up, you can easily connect controllers to it, and it does what it was advertised it would do. However, the Atari VCS is a very bare bones system that really relies on tinkerers to fill it out. Launching an additional OS like Linux to get it to run Steam really does make it worth it, but regular people buying this thing from GameStop are probably not going to jump through the extra hoops. And the 32 gigabyte SSD is really gonna feel small soon enough. It does contain an open N.2 slot for extra storage, but you need torque screws to open up the console. And I guess you could attach a thumb drive to it for expanded storage, but I don't know why you would do that when you can get a blazing fast one terabyte M.2 drive for $100 and call it a day. One notable issue that I ran into is that you can't wake up the console with the controller wirelessly. At least I can do it with the classic joystick. I put the system to sleep and tried pushing all kinds of buttons on the controller and it just wouldn't wake up. And that wouldn't be that big of a deal if the power button wasn't on the back of the system and flush with the back. There's really no way to feel it out unless you actually know where it is. But other than that, the Atari VCS is a solid system and I feel that I got my money's worth. I'm serious. And would I recommend the Atari VCS to somebody? It really depends. I, I don't really think that I would recommend it to somebody who's not familiar with computers. Um, and I'm actually struggling to see how this system, given the current offerings, is worth $300 other than it being one of the most controversial systems of its time. You could even get an Xbox Series S for the same amount of money and it comes with a controller and an expansive library of games via Xbox Game Pass and it has 500 gigs of storage. And you could also spend $20 extra to unlock developer mode and put a bunch of emulators on it. Atari does promise that this isn't the final version of software and it states that they always intended the backers to be beta testers to provide feedback, which I guess it's good that they want to make it better, but it is a final twist to the backers who bought this 
on the assumption that the product would be retail ready when they got it in their hands, but I guess it's cool that backers actually got this before it hit store shelves. Also, expect a couple of more videos in the next month or so detailing the system's quirks and features like how it plans to implement the Atari coin and the Atari casino, so that should be a good time. So that's the Atari VCS, the system that they said would never come out and I would be scammed. Well, I have it, it's still the laughing stock of the gaming YouTube circle and it's a hard state to remove. But I don't think that the general public will be impacted by this and assuming that it does come out on time and it's marketed correctly, I think people will buy this and be happy with their purchase. So is the Atari VCS a waste of money? Sure in the same way that an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 is a waste of money. I don't really feel cheated out of my money and it's not like I chose not to pay rent or my utilities that month and I had the money, it looked like a cool product, I backed it, end of story. I don't really feel that it's a waste of money but if you do, that's your call. If you made it this far in the video, please like the video and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe as well. They're the best way to support the channel and best of all, it's free. So you know you're going to get your money's worth. I also have a ton of other videos for you to check out, so be sure to check them out as well. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.